Welcome to six reasons why electric vehicles are going to be the future of four-wheel drives and off-roading, starting with why they're going to be better off-road. Now that starts with a recap of what we do at the moment, and I've just invented this term called CWD, or combined wheel drive, to describe a conventional drivetrain. We've got here an internal combustion engine, be that petrol or diesel, that will drive a transfer case, gearbox, and then there's a couple of differentials on each axle, and then that drives the wheels, maybe even a centre differential as well. That's what we used to do um, at the moment. In the future, we're going to be doing IWD or individual wheel drive, which looks quite different. Again, we've got four wheels, but each wheel has got its individual axle and attached to that is some form of small gearbox, a bit like maybe the portal axle reduction gears and an individual electric motor. So there's four motors and it all connected to and controlled by a computer which figures out the torque distribution left, right, front, rear and everything else. So that's the way of the future and here's why it's going to be amazing off-road. Now you've probably seen this video from Rivian where they do a tank turn that's done by making the left wheels of the car go forwards, the right wheels of the car go backwards. We'll kind of skip over the environmentally unfriendly anti-tread lightly uh, sort of display there but um, the point being is that being able to do that is actually a valid and very useful technique off road to be able to turn the vehicle around like that but also it's going to be better actually than cross axle differential locks and brake traction control now you can see we've got an ever look at that rear right wheel spin 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 trying to spin again and you know move it forward there's so much technology on cars which is designed to get round the limitations of the differential, lockers, LSD, traction control, all of that goes away completely with IWD and you mark my words, an IWD vehicle will be able to outperform anything we have at the moment, all else being equal, you, you, I will absolutely stake my reputation on that. Then we've got torque control and acceleration here. So here's my one tenth scale Traxxas TRX4 and I'm not the world's best RC driver but even so you can see that just how precisely you can control the torque coming in and out and of course it being an electric vehicle you can accelerate very very quickly as well and that, that's two capabilities which ICE engines just can't really match. Now the vehicles are also going to be more reliable as well and why are they going to be more reliable? Well there's a lot going on in an internal combustion engine. Look at it, you've got starter motors, transmissions, fuel systems, air systems, gearboxes, cooling. And with an electric vehicle, a lot of that goes away and what doesn't go away becomes simpler. Now, on top of those basics, we've also got things like AdBlue and DPFs and EGR and all of them that we've just added extra complexity on to deal with emissions. So with an EV, there's less to go wrong. It's simpler to maintain, so it's going to be more reliable. Now they're also going to be easier to modify as well. So here we've got a skateboard concept from Atlas and it's pretty straightforward. You can just see almost two wheels, battery, motors. Now it's grossly oversimplifying the engineering but you kind of um, get the idea. And everything is by wire, so steering by wire, drive by wire. And you're going, oh, hang on, hang on, what do you mean? By wire? I don't like that. Well, airliners have had it for, for decades so vehicles shouldn't have a problem with by wire control. So We've got things like your four independent motors, your configurable battery, batteries obviously in the middle and centre which is a great place for them, but they could go anywhere. Um, a motor could almost go different places as, as well. So you've got a huge amount of configurability and customizability there and that's going to be pretty exciting I think for the future. Now also the vehicles are going to be quieter. So listen to this. So that's me driving a PHEV electric Range Rover and um, that's a plug-in hybrid, it's only got a range of about 50 kilometres but that was enough for us to do a reasonable amount of off-roading with it. Now you heard there that the only sound you could really hear apart from the whine of the electric motor was the clanking of the chains on the trailer which is pretty amazing. So when you're trying to be an environmentally friendly camper with animals, everyone else, a uh, quiet vehicle is going to be great. And um, also, you know, when I was driving it, I found that I could really hear what the tyres were doing and in a way that I couldn't if there was a petrol engine or diesel engine running. So it's a pretty amazing experience. I think quieter is going to be a good thing overall.
Then we've got portable power. This got this gigantic battery, which is the car. So then, you know, you can bring all sorts of power tools along, fewer batteries and charges for that. You can have a heated and cooled seat. And obviously all of this has a massive effect on range, um, but nevertheless, the concept is there. Uh, you can have high powered communications. You can beam data up into satellites. So yes, you can post on Facebook in the middle of the Simpson desert. And just think of the winching you can do. No more 12 volt um, winch off your starter motor or equivalent there. You just got this gigantic power point there. You can just winch yourself anywhere. It's going to be amazing. Then we've got storage. So here is the front of a Rivian and in it we have a lady. Try doing that with any conventional vehicle, you can't. Um, same sort of concept from Bollinger here. So they've just got this completely flat vehicle then. Again, no transmission tunnel, no um, engine as we know it there. Got a motor instead and just a long plank of wood there. Can't do that in any conventional vehicle um, at all. And Rivian also have this tunnel um, in front of the back axle on their ute as well. So a lot more storage capability. Now there is one big problem after these six advantages and I'm sure you know what it is and it is of course ranging and recharging. So here you can see I'm driving a Tesla Model X and the range on that vehicle is nominally 580 kilometers. Now this X you can see that I'm driving here has a T-van on the back that weighed 1000 kilograms. Um, we had to adjust the table mass um, just so it was within the very light range for the Tesla and driving it got a range of about 200 kilometers maybe 250 if we're pushing it but still nowhere near the 580 and that was lightly loaded no roof rack no nothing in the car apart from two of us so yeah range has a long way to go before it is viable for touring and I would say we need a range of five times what we have at the moment from electric vehicles or possibly hydrogen in the future and charge speed has to go at least three times when you consider the new range but there is hope because because here is an engineer from Atlas. You can look at this uh, video on YouTube as well. And he's talking about going from 0 to 100% charge in 9 minutes 26 seconds, which is oddly specific. And that's peaking at a range increase of 6,000 miles per hour. Now, if we can do even half or, or a third of that, that's going to be plenty. So, so that's going to be absolutely an incredible amount of energy to pour it pour into a vehicle there. So yeah, it's going to be amazing to see where this goes. So it's not viable at the moment. Will it be in the future? Yes, I believe it will be. And for day trips, we're pretty much always also there if you want to go forward driving just for a day. Now we're going to need new skills to deal with these EV vehicles and the first one is going to be um, battery management. You're going to have to worry about whether the battery is too hot, too cold, the speed of charge because of some batteries the quicker you charge it the more life you take out of them, the percentage you charge it to, the percentage you deplete it to, the loss over time. There's, there's a fair lot going on if you want to get the best out of your battery. It's not just plug it in and go because they're so big and expensive and hard to change. Not like your phone battery. You can't just go, oh I just need a new phone battery and just you know spend a little bit of money and get it. It's, it's a bigger deal for EVs. Then you've got to look at systems management. At the moment, having done some EV interstate trips, you can't just get in and go. Um, you've got to plan your route um, and figure out where things are at. And you've also got to learn how to optimize the car around the battery as well. So that's going to be a new skill. And then driving skills, we're going to have to learn how to get the best out of individual wheel drive, AWS all wheel steer, how to work with regeneration, how to get the best out of that amazing torque control and acceleration and learn the automated systems of the vehicles. And I do hope that the EV manufacturers actually give the driver some control as opposed to nanny state the whole thing, which is what we're tending to see from the existing manufacturers. So the future is coming, whether you like it or not, and free to keep an eye on it, Atlas, Rivian and Bollinger, and that's a lot of the images I've used here when I haven't had my own, so keep an eye on those three, and also please subscribe to my channel and follow me on Facebook for more on four-wheel drives, cars, towing and electric vehicles.